Lesson 23, what is ISO and how does it work? ISO stands for International Standards Organization. So to give you any practical indication of what it means in photography, this is not very helpful. What is important to remember is that it is the same from camera to camera, from brand to brand, and even on your phone. Understanding ISO is really important because it is one of the key aspects of exposure. ISO is a measurement of how responsive your camera's sensor is to light. Have you ever noticed that taking photos with your phone in a really dark place, it still manages to do this okay? This is because your phone automatically adjusts the ISO setting. So it's making the sensor more responsive to light and so when there's less light it's easier then to take a photograph but you may have also noticed even though your phone can take photos in very low light if you look closely at them the quality is usually very poor and so just as it's more difficult more challenging for us to see naturally when the light's low like at night or in dark places it's also more challenging more difficult for our cameras to record photos when the light is very low and this is why it's important to manage your ISO setting well. You can manage how responsive your camera sensor is to light using the ISO setting. So when there's a lot of light on a bright sunny day, you'll want to use the lowest possible setting, which is usually around ISO 100. This is when the camera's sensor is less responsive to the light. Because there's so much light when it's a bright sunny day, you don't need to use such a high ISO. In a darker situation, like if you went to go inside or in a cave or take photos at night, then you're going to need to adjust your ISO so that your camera's sensor will be more responsive to the lower amount of light. And how you adjust your sensor depends on how low the light is, how little or how much light there is. At higher ISO settings, you do run the risk of a lower quality image. When you get to very high ISO settings, you're going to start to notice what we call digital noise. These are little colored specks in your photos. And the color and the contrast will also flatten out. How much this happens depends on the camera model that you're using, how high quality your sensor is and how new it is. Newer sensors tend to have a much greater capacity to record better quality photos at high ISO settings. As you make adjustments to the ISO settings, you can double or halve how responsive your camera sensor is. So if you have your camera set at ISO 100 and you adjust this to ISO 200, your camera sensor is then twice as responsive to the light. So the difference between using your phone at night and using your camera at night is that on your phone, your photos might look quite nice initially until you look more closely at them. This is because the phone will add some more cleaning up and digital computation to make the images look nicer where with your camera you have to manage this yourself but using your camera you've got a higher quality sensor in your camera so it is going to manage to give you a better base image to work with than your phone will with your phone set to a high iso setting you're going to have a lot more problem with digital noise and low quality images than you will with your camera and as I said earlier, the newer the camera, the higher quality the sensor, the better quality image you're going to get. This is technology that has advanced a lot in cameras over the years. On the early digital cameras, you didn't want to use them at anything higher than, say, two or 400 ISO. Now the new cameras have much, much higher ISO settings and produce much better quality pictures. And because of the lower quality results that we see as we start using higher and higher ISO, I prefer to keep my ISO setting as low as possible. This is a good foundation for any exposure, and I only set my ISO higher when I'm unable to attain the other settings, the aperture and the shutter speed settings that I want to. And adjusting the ISO setting is gonna have no creative influence on your photographs as adjusting the aperture and the shutter speed can have. Lesson 23, practical exercise. What is ISO and how does it work? In this exercise, you're going to learn how to determine what the highest ISO setting is that you're comfortable to use on your camera. For this exercise, 
set your camera up on a tripod or on a firm surface like a table, somewhere reasonably close to a window. You're going to be using some slower shutter speeds in this exercise, so you don't want your camera to be moving at all during the exposures. Find yourself a subject to photograph that's not too light or not too dark, something that's fairly neutral toned. And set it up close to the window and also turn the lights on in the room. I want you to set your camera's exposure mode to manual and adjust your ISO setting so that it's 100 and your aperture so it's at f5.6. Then adjust your shutter speed so that your meter is reading zero. And take a series of photographs making interesting compositions. Now close the curtains or blinds so that you're blocking most or all of the light coming in the window. And adjust your ISO setting, only your ISO setting, so that your meter is reading zero again and take some more photos. Once you've taken some photos, adjust your aperture setting down to f8 and then maybe f11. At the same time, adjust your ISO so that your meter is reading zero and take some more photos. Keep adjusting your aperture to narrower and narrower settings and raising your ISO until you reach your narrowest aperture setting or your highest ISO. And once you've got to your narrowest aperture, start using a faster shutter speed and balancing this also with your ISO setting. Now load the photos to your computer and zoom into each one at 100%. Look at the first ones you took with your ISO set to 100, then look at the last ones you've taken with your ISO set to the highest ISO setting. Make sure to zoom into 100% so you can really look at the detail and check the colour and the contrast and particularly the digital noise. You're most likely to see this in areas of a photo that are a little bit underexposed or a little bit dark. At what ISO setting do you start to see unacceptable levels of digital noise? Try and keep your ISO lower than that setting whenever possible. The main points in this lesson are the ISO setting controls how responsive the camera's sensor is to light. Very high ISO settings can lead to low image quality. Higher quality sensors show less digital noise. Practice this to improve your photography. Limit your ISO setting to no higher than ISO 400 as much as you can. Only use a higher ISO when the light is low and your shutter speed is too slow.